Welcome back to Lauren's Kitchen. Okay, first things first. I don't know how many of you guys, so I'm actually recording this on today's Sunday. I don't know how many of you guys were on my Instagram a while ago. If you saw the Instagram live I did with Kingston Bell. Um, I've never done Instagram live before, but I actually quite liked it. So if you guys want me to do like actual lives, I can put together like a segment. I just got a really good idea from my friend Carlington Silburn, but I'll only do it if it's something that you guys think that you would want to watch. So, um, yeah, let me know down below if you guys want that. So today's kitchen, we're going to be doing my butternut squash stew. I have spoken about this like so many times. It's time to like actually get it on a popping. So I just want to add a disclaimer before I get into it. Usually I use lentils, chickpeas, mung beans. I use a variety of different beans, but also before I get into it, you, you know my usual spiel. Use whatever you want, switch out whatever you want. When it comes to cooking and food, it is very, very personal. Very personal. Nobody can tell you how to make something. If you make something and you like it, mission accomplished. Food is a very personal situation, right? So let's just say I make this and I use butternut squash, but you don't have butternut squash or you don't like butternut squash, feel free to switch it out. I make my stew a little thick. If you want yours to be thin, make it thin. I hate when people generalize food and say, oh, this is not how you make it or that's not how you make it. Shut the fuck up. Make it however you want to make it. You're eating it. You're not running a restaurant. You're not feeding 10,000 people. Make it how you want to eat it. Food is personal, okay? As long as you like it, that's what it is. There's no wrong way or right way to make food. Food is an experimental adventure and we're in on this together, okay? Now that I've gotten that out of the way, I'm gonna pour some kombucha in my wine glass, thanks to Deandra for letting me in on her secret. So now I've been doing it. Today I'm going to have Health Aid Grape Vibes. It is a bubbly probiotic tea. Um, pro means after you've eaten, so I'll do it after. Cause I, uh, let's just do it after. Cause it's not like I've eaten all day. I'm gonna keep my wine glass in the fridge so it's chilled. Everything dropped on you. There is still cereal on my fridge. Usually I clear up everything, but today is, it's running late, you guys, and I have to get up early <laughs> to work remote tomorrow and be in another Zoom meeting. So I just, you know, let's just, next time they won't be up there, but for today they're gonna be up there. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through the ingredients. Okay, so I have lentil beans. Now, I usually buy the beans in the bag. I don't really buy them in the can, and I soak them overnight. I just, to me, they taste better. But we're living in serious times and the supermarket has become a dangerous place where there's not a lot of food, okay? So I got the lentil beans, which is a really, really good source of fiber. If you've never tried lentils, let me tell you something about lentils. They are the superstar that the radio just does not play. They make really good meat. You can curry these, you can stew these, you can make a stew with them. Like, they are so good. I feel like when you harvest the power of beans and make them all together, they're just so bomb. So when it comes on to using actual beans, I like to soak them overnight in water because they just cook better. So I actually have this already soaked from last night that I had sitting in my fridge. Glass container because I have been reducing, this is um, Rubbermaid, and I've been trying to reduce the amount of plastic that I use. You know you used to make those little plastic containers. I've been trying to reduce those a lot. So these are my lentils. There's no specific amount. I just have a few in here and I put water in there and overnight they kind of swell up and they get nice and fat. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if you guys notice, like, you guys see? I don't know if you guys can see, like, I'm looking mad cute today, guys. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Let me, I don't know if you guys have been noticing what's been happening here. The camera's probably not high enough, but like, oh, can you see it? I don't know if you can see all that, but you probably can because it's, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot happening here. So I know, I know you see it. <laughs> I'm using this. It's not a glamorous color, it's actually blue. I've had this for a while. I don't know where I got this from, to be honest. Um, I would never buy a blue pot, so I know I didn't buy this, 
uh, because I would never buy a blue pot. But it gets the job done. It's non-stick. I do have my organic garbanzo beans. I got these from Trader Joe's. You can buy these in the can or you can buy them as is. I have them in the can because I explain to you guys we are living in serious times I have organic butternut squash which is really the this is what's gonna make the big difference and I'm also gonna put like variations that you guys can use if you guys don't have these ingredients so I have organic butternut squash I have coconut milk okay and I have black beans frijoles negros frijoles I don't know if that's how you say it. frijoles Frijoles, whatever, like I have these and these. And I have some steam in a bag butternut squash that I'm gonna put in there because I want it to be extra butternutty and squashy. <laughs> we're gonna start off, you know the usual, I'm gonna put my apron on and then we're gonna get down to the cooking. So I'm gonna put my aprons on, I'm gonna wash my cans and we're gonna get it on and popping. This is a really, really simple recipe. And I also have right here, <laughs> conveniently, I have some graced corned beef and I have Linstead Market Jamaica Kalalu. I don't remember where I got this from. And it expired May 31st, 2019, but I'm still gonna make it. I'm gonna make this <laughs> because they're in the can and like, like what's the worst that could happen? Like, I don't know, but I'm gonna make this and some potatoes for my husband for him to have. And I'm gonna try and make like, you know, hash brown. Like that's, that's, that's the vibe I'm going for. I'm not gonna make that on camera because I've never done that before. But yeah, so I'm just gonna wash my cans and the next time you see me, I will be in my red apron, okay? Also, my top is from Fashion Nova. Um, I bought it. I really like it because it's like nice to look at. The quality is rubbish and I just don't know if like when I wash it, if it's gonna even exist anymore. But it is really hella cute and it's like goddess gang because you know, we are goddesses. All right guys, so are you ready? Let's go. I'm back red apron and all okay so now we're ready to get the pot started so the first thing i'm going to do does this make a difference dead ass i do not know okay so we're gonna turn on the stove i have my stove on okay and i have my little blue pot here out of air shot because it's tacky as hell so i'm gonna start off with the lentil so i'm just gonna you're gonna pour it in there and make sure that you wash these before just kind of give them like a little rinse so you're gonna wash your peas before you soak them in its water you're gonna pour it in right then you're gonna add some water don't gotta be a lot because you can add more so i'm just gonna add about that much more and you and like i said you're gonna add as you go along if you see that you need more so I've just added my water and the mung beans. I'm probably gonna add a little bit more water in there. But that's that. So my, my lentils are in and then slowly we're gonna just start adding our different beans, right? So now I'm just gonna add my, these are black beans. So I wash them, strain them, and make sure I do all of that good stuff. The next thing is my chickpeas. While that's in there, you're going to give it like a quick stir. Make sure all the peas and everything is like looking right. And I want to give you guys a look of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to use my handheld camera right here and just show you guys uh, what we're working with. So these are my peas and it's a beautiful mix of color. Do you see that? We have like red, brown, a little bit of green. And like I said, add water as you see fit. That is a good looking pot. Beans, peas, they offer such a good source of protein and fiber, and they are an excellent substitute for meat. The next thing that we're gonna add in here is the butternut squash. Now I have the organic one from Trader Joe's. It comes in a can and all it is is just butternut squash pureed, right? If you do not have butternut squash, a very good substitute for this, depending on where you are, is pumpkin. But if you're from the Caribbean, you can go to your market and depending on where you live, you can buy um, the, the type of pumpkin that we use in Jamaica and you can just boil that down until it's super soft and just whip it up and that'll be like your base. So this is what I'm gonna add here. I'm gonna add my butternut squash and like I said you don't have to use butternut squash you can use pumpkin this idea actually came to me from my friend Ali I was at home one day 
and I had all of these things, right? And I was cooking and I had the can of the butternut squash. I'm like, what am I gonna use this to do? Because I bought this at this at Trader Joe's but did not know what I was gonna do with it. And my friend Ali was on the phone and he was just like, just throw them all in. Just just make a make, throw it in there. And I'm like, yeah, let's just try that. And I did it that one time and this was an accident, but it turned out to be like a really, really good accident, you guys. So I'm just making sure that I get everything in there. Ugh, and I look like me, I get everything. It's just old. Come on. Don't play with me. What I'm gonna do to get the rest of it, because I don't play with my pumpkin. I mean my butternut squash. Butternut squash and pumpkin have a very similar, you know, what name? I forget. I'm just gonna pour that in there to make sure I get everything because you know, waste nothing. And now if you look at it, it's getting like a nice orange color. And that's the color that it is going to have. It's gonna keep that orange color. So, you're just adding in ingredients, like there's no real order to it. Like you, you add the, the peas that you're soaking first with the water and then you add like your butternut squash puree or your pumpkin puree. And then the magic ingredient that makes this stew have its body. Cause you guys, let me tell you something. I'm all about body, okay? Like if it, <laughs> I like bodies, I like my food thick. You know, because I'm a thick girl. And so thick girls like me, we need our food to be thick. I don't like that thin food, that skinny food. It's not for me. So I'm gonna add coconut milk. I'm just using Goya coconut milk, the canned one that they use to make rice in Jamaica. Also, you guys, have you ever, like, that's another, that's another one. But I'm just using Goya, you can use any one. You want the canned coconut milk, like this one. You don't want the one that you drink in the box. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the one in the can. They're, don't get them confused. This one is more like the milk. And the one you get at the supermarket is more like a drink in the box. It's confusing, but buy it in another can. That's all I'm gonna say. Now I'm going to add my coconut milk. I'm gonna give it like a quick stir. It doesn't matter if like the ingredients are mixing together. There we go, I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. Cause sometimes it can just like settle. And this is what's gonna make it thick. It's gonna give it that thickness. You know what I'm saying? Make it thick. As usual, you're gonna stir, 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 stir. <laughs> that is really gonna bring out the flavor in it. <laughs> okay. Guys, let me tell you something. If you guys could smell this. Also, my lashes are from Nyla's Lashes, okay? They're everything. She is a black female business owner and she lives in New York and I'll put the links down below because you guys know I don't really wear lashes or whatever, but like today I have lashes on and I'm feeling some type of way. Can you imagine my lashes dropping here? <laughs> so I'm going to add butternut squash and some potato, but I'm not gonna add it yet right because they cook kind of quick so what i'm going to do put a little bit more water and i i utilize all the ingredients so i put a little bit of water in here to get all the remnants of the coconut milk that's left you know we're not wasting anything around here <laughs> nothing gets wasted here the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna season my pot okay this is where you're gonna get as a creative as you want add whatever you want to it Play around, there are no rules to food. You do whatever you want. So, over here, look at me see, man. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I hate that, man. And I'm gonna add a little garlic, herb, black pepper, and sea salt. I'm gonna add thyme, okay? Thyme. Thyme. There's something about thyme and the way it makes your food smell. There's something, I don't know, every time I smell thyme, I feel like I'm being transported back into my mother's kitchen, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of time. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a bit. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep shaking that in there. <laughs> time 
and coconut milk. I don't know, there's nothing more Jamaican than that to me. Gonna add a little bit of the garlic and herb in here. So in this garlic and herb, it has garlic, herb, black pepper, and sea salt. So it has a triad of like three other things I would use. So, you know, I just mix it in there. Because even though this is a soup slash stew, you want to make sure that you season your pot. Like you have to season your pot. Like, come on now. Seasoning is so important. Ground ginger. I put ginger in everything, okay? Just just understand. Ginger is a way of life. So I'm just gonna dip in here. I'm just gonna put about that in there. It's not like a hell of a lot. <laughs> you know, but it's not a little bit. I'm gonna put some cumin in here because I love cumin and I put it in everything. Okay, end of story. So adding a little bit of cumin in here, like I said, season it however you want. My way is not necessarily law, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna add is, I have two containers of, th of thyme. I'm gonna do some rosemary, but I'm looking for my turmeric because, but wait there. The next thing I'm gonna add is turmeric. Turmeric is magic. Turmeric is life. Turmeric is so good for you in so many ways. And I absolutely, whenever I make this, I have to make sure that turmeric is in there. Like, guys, I love turmeric. And this also gives it that yellow color that it's gonna have. But like I said, guys, season it however you want. And then I'm gonna show you guys before I stir it what it's looking like. So those are my mirage of seasonings on top. You see that? And I'm just going to, I'm gonna stir it in there. So, let me tell you how that smells. Let me tell you some the smell of that. So the next thing that I'm going to do right now, while that sits there and kind of stews, and you want to do it on right now, I have it on medium heat. Um, I'm going to take it a little bit lower than medium, but not too low. So it's right between medium and low. So my stove has like 10 levels. It's on level four right now. If, if that gives you like a good guesstimate of like where we are. If you can see my lights, I apologize. It's pitch black outside. I had to get this on and pop in some way, somehow. So yes, I use lights. Yes, okay? So this is gonna sit here. This is not a dish that you're gonna be in a hurry to make. You want it to take its time and really steam, steam, <laughs> steam so you can get all those ingredients in there and get everything, you know, feeling, tasting good. I'm gonna add a cover to this pot so that it can steam up the right way. Where is my pot cover? When do it my pot cover? Rot it. This is not the right cover. Life never offered me so rough for me. Anyway, it's it's it'll it'll make do, okay? So now I'm going to dice up my potato. Make sure that you peel your potato, peel it, and get it on and pop in. Okay? Because this is going to be I don't want to say our main ingredient, but it's gonna be, you know. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my potatoes, okay? Adding my potatoes in there. Adding my potatoes in there. Guys, I'm making this with one hand, chill. Camera angles are not gonna be the best. You know what I'm saying? Then, I'm gonna add my butternut squash. And then I'm gonna give it some stir. I have my stove turned down to 2.5 now, in case anybody's wondering, right? So there I have that in there. 
and that's gonna cook up nice and slow, okay? You can taste it after a while. You'll know when it starts to cook. You'll see like the, the, the coconut milk, you'll see that kind of like blend out and becomes like one thick, rich, creamy thing. I also want to add, feel free to add whatever you want to this. You can add chicken to this, okay? This would be good with some chicken if you eat meat. Again, I'm telling you, there's no rules to anything. You can add chicken to it. You can add some beef to this. That would be bomb if you're into beef. I can't eat red meat, but if you can, you throw some beef pieces in there. Honey, that would be fire. Okay, you can also add, I, I dice up some sweet potatoes. I love Jamaican sweet potatoes. So instead of this, the diced up butternut squash, dice up some sweet potatoes, dice up some pumpkin along with the puree. Let me tell you something you don't understand and usually i'll add mung beans to this so i usually have four beans right now i only have three i have chickpeas lentils and black beans but usually i have four and it gives it a nice guys just just trust me so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt i have a garlic infused sea salt i'm gonna add in here hopefully it's not super salty i might just wait until after it cooks up a little bit to taste it and while that is cooking up okay because i have it on low because you want to make sure that your steam is happening in there. I am going to run a little science experiment, okay? I've never made hash browns before. Ever, 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 ever. Hope we can. I've never made hash browns before and I wanted to like run a little test. So I have my bowl here. I have a potato and I have a grato. And I'm just going to put it on this side here. Or should I do this side? Maybe this side. I don't know. And I'm just going to grate today. So I'm going to see which one looks better. Yes, that's it. It's thick. It's thick. It's thick. And I'm just gonna grate her. It's probably gonna sound like. Does that stress me out? Yeah. I've got my butternut squash stew here on the stove, going at it, just kind of like I have it on low heat, so it's like cooking up nice. And then I'm gonna do a little side project. So I'm gonna attempt to make like, you know, like hash browns, but like I've never made it before. I just grated some potato and I'm about to cook it. And I'm gonna make it with corned beef. I'm not gonna eat this obviously because I don't eat meat, this is for my husband. I just wanna say that this corned beef is from Grace and it is brought to you by Ali, who sent these all the way from um, Atlanta for me. He sent me, I think, three of these. There are many other corned beefs, but Grace is the only one that we acknowledge, okay? Grace is the only one that matters. I said what I said. Come at me. And I don't even eat meat. Why meat if it smells so good? There's a lot of people who don't eat meat and the, the scent of meat, like, disgusts them. They're like, oh my god, it smells so disgusting. I can never. Why do you eat meat? Like, shut the fuck up. We get it. You don't eat meat. You don't have to be dramatic about it. Like, the fuck? Ugh. The fuck? Like, honestly. Smell real good. And like I said, I just have a potato that I shred up. I don't even know if it's going to come out right, guys. I've never done this before. We're doing an experiment together. Like, I'm making that, but this is like a side project. Because I've been dying to make it. So I'm just going to season it with a little bit of sea salt. A little bit of black pepper. What else? I like to add a lot of things. A lot of things. Should we use a little bit of cinnamon so that it kind of has like a little vibe to it? I like to play around in the kitchen because there's no rules to my kitchen. I feel like I want to add a little bit of cinnamon. Your girl has never done this before, so. I'm gonna do it flat. This is so interesting. Like I've literally never done this before. Make sure you wash your goddamn hands before you do this. If you're making it for yourself, I guess it doesn't really matter. Some 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. And I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic and sea salt. Or should I? Should I? Should I? Just a little bit? Not a lot. 
I love cinnamon, okay? I said it. Okay, I want it to like stay. I want to flip it, but I don't know how. Hold on, I have an idea. It's actually not that good of an idea, but I can't flip. So I'm not going to pretend like I can. <laughs> Genius. And she's not done. She could have she could have been on that side browning for a little bit more, if you guys can see. But we know. We know what to do for the other side. So I'm just gonna season her the same way. We're gonna, you know, just wait for everything to cook up and then I'll be back when I'm making the corned beef. I'm not gonna do anything special with the corned beef. I'm just gonna fry it up and that's it. Like it is nothing special. So yeah. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like glide it into this pot pan. Wait, is it done? Yes, I think it's done. So basically that's my, my version of like hash browns. I'm just put a little bit of oil in here for the, I don't think you need any for that though, to be honest. So I'm just gonna like, I think corned beef makes its own oil, right? Or, I meant me and my cup of diamond, I don't know. So this just not gonna come out, God no? Well. Meanwhile, my stew is getting nice and thick over there, you guys. Dead ass. No, so what me I do? What me I do? What me I do in our real life? What the fuck am I doing? Okay, honey, I see you. Corn beef does not make its own oil. I'm a fucking idiot. So I'm just going to add a little bit of almond oil i mean olive oil over here not too much and then as usual season the hell out of this corned beef does not need salt i hope no salt none of this just a little bit more black pepper just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> You can put your onion, your scallions, all of them something there. I don't be liking all of that shit, so that's what's up. Okay, so I'm about to serve the corned beef. So all I'm gonna do on top of the hash, as you can see my beautiful hash here, I am just gonna put some corned beef on top. Nothing fancy, it ain't nothing special. It's just a little experiment I wanted to run. And there is my corned beef and hash browns. Prepared for you by somebody who doesn't eat meat for somebody who will. Taste it first. Guys, I've completely forgotten, not forgotten, but annihilated my soup. It is 7.53 and I had it on like the lowest. It's been on here for like an hour now. Whoa, it's so thick. Yeah, it's done. This is done. This is done, 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 done. How is it? It's really good. Really? Do you want hot sauce still? Yeah. I put hot sauce on everything. Including hot sauce. Is it like a white people thing? Like, why do you like hot sauce so much? I don't feel like you don't like hot sauce. I mean, I don't use it like you do. Okay, so we're gonna taste this. Henry's also in the kitchen eating, if you hear a little, like, munching song. It's done. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so good. So, that's what I meant when I said that you can wait until afterwards to add any more salt. So I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. It's perfect the way it is and I don't need any salt in there. But every now and again, salt brings out the flavor and stuff. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more in here. Dude, you have to taste this. This is so good. And it's so thick, oh my god. Thick girls making thick food. <laughs> I'm gonna put some basil on top of here. Oh my god, the coconut milk is the key to this, okay. You know it's bad luck to spill salt. I did not know that. It is. 
The love of pepper. No, that doesn't count, but it, I, I, I've known for a while that it's bad enough to spill salt. Okay guys, I'm gonna actually move this here so that you can get a closer look into it. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick start. Do you see how thick she is? All right, so I have my bowl here. And I'm just gonna take up a nice heaping serving. And this is where the test is gonna be. We're gonna, this is gonna be live, you guys. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Do you see that? Oh my God. Okay, hold on. A whole heart. It's amazing. It's not too salty. I tell myself, like, I'm like, I don't taste any salt in it at all. It's perfect. Like, guys, baby, you have to taste this. Taste it. Hold on. I'm gonna give you guys my husband's. You're gonna hear his audio. I'm gonna have him taste it. You ready? Blow it, cause it's hot. How is it? Yeah, it's better than the last time you made it. It's bomb. I don't know what you did this time differently, but it's amazing. So I made my infamous butternut squash soup that I am always, always talking about. It was a success. It was really, really good. I don't know what made this one different, but this one was really, really, really good. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. It is popping. It's nice, it's thick, it's hearty. You can make it with like some cornbread on the side if you want, whatever you want. Feel free to put chicken in it. It is that good. I think I listed like the substitutes that you guys can use just in case you don't have butternut squash but also check out the description box below because I will get more details in it. All in all, I think I had it on the stove for 45 minutes to 50 minutes but it was on like one so on the lowest simmer for like maybe 20 minutes because I wanted it a specific consistency but guys like I cannot wait to like go finish my bowl right now because it's like it's oh my god it's so thick and I, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I don't think you guys understand. Like, honestly, the bomb. So tune in next week, or the, since we're doing these bi-weekly, tune in not next week, but the week after to Lauren's Kitchen. If you guys have any suggestions or anything that you want me to make, maybe you have an idea, maybe you want to see if something works, send them in, I will do this. I will do it because you guys know I love to run experiments. Do you guys want me to bake? Do you guys want pastries? Like, what do you guys want? Comment down below. This is our cooking channel. Not just about me, it's about us. So, with that being said, we're gonna end the show right here.